salatu wassalamu ala ashrafil anbiya wa mursalin Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good afternoon everybody uh, First and foremost I wanted to thank you for being here um, Before I start my session today on the, um, going beyond boundaries and redefining beauty in these uncertain times I thought I'd introduce you a bit about myself and how I came about to essentially go through this life trying to find the most important questions and um, so let me just cool lovely all right so beyond boundaries redefining beauty in a world of uncertainty as I was thinking about this topic I was thinking about what does uncertainty essentially mean have we ever lived in a time wherever things were certain I think never right from the moment that we're small all the way that we grow up things are never certain and for me of course I think growing up with someone without arms I had to go through a lot of challenges of my own but one of the things that I always believed in was that we all had really the opportunity and the best right to live the best life that we can when we talk about trying to find answers for me I um, I was very fortunate because I managed to go through a really good life uh, I went to university but my appetite for knowledge and my appetite to understand things came from a very early age as well when I was in high school I already started to understood to, to ask the questions of why things are the way they are in particular I think my condition of growing up with our arms got me to ask like why me right why why other people have arms and why I don't have arms um, but I never really obsessed about the question on why per se but just why life is the way it is and so I got to go to university Alhamdulillah and I finished uh, graduated with a bachelor's of psychology and then I went on traveling I went on traveling all over the world to seek answers I got to travel because of work I got to travel because of le leisure I got to travel simply because I believed that traveling was going to make me understand more of the world and one of the things I really wanted to understand was the beauty of the world that we lived in in the journey that I went through not only did I go to university to learn or travel I went to other unorthodox places to go and get education as well I traveled across the Nusantara region Indonesia uh, Thailand uh, Vietnam uh, just all over Southeast Asia as well and I even went to sign up for a school up window which is one of those religious schools in a wooden hut in Indonesia and I spent many years there as well learning about life and coincidentally I learned something very profound when I was traveling there which I felt had a lot to do with this topic that we're talking about in redefining beauty in an uncertain age one of the things I learned I think because I, I went through so many things both in university and also outside to learn about how to get the best of life how to live the best in this life but I think what was more important was for me to understand what was real and what was the real knowledge that I needed to understand and so when I went to Indonesia quite recently I I think I picked up something quite profound whereby if something was to be beautiful there was two things that was prerequisite for something to be beautiful and that is for it to be good right something that is good for us and the other is something that is truthful or something that is anchored in truth um, if we go today right so today of course those knowledge has helped me go around and I I'm up here talking because it is what I do I do public speak uh, speeches and lectures and um, I found that I guess in this 40 years of living being up here being able to share being able to give ideas being able to spark conversations or spark uh, thought processes to me really gave me that deep meaning of life and as I pondered on this question of beauty I went and did what most of us would do I googled it right and so I wanted to understand and define the pulse of what we actually define as beauty and um, 
Sadly, or not surprisingly, as I googled beauty or the definition of beauty, these three pictures are simply the reflection of the other 100 pictures that we see when we google the word beauty. So the definition of our, the word beauty is really anchored to this whole looking good, this whole how, you know, making you feel good. And of course, I don't think m many of us uh, feel like the standards or the definition of beauty fits any one of us today, right? And in fact, if we look into the Cambridge University definition, the first three definitions of beauty also reflects on what I just said, whereby it mentions about the quality of being pleasing and attractive, especially to look at, right? A person or a thing that is pleasing and attractive, especially to look at, again. And of course, the business of making people look attractive. So as you can see, even on a definitional standpoint, the psyche of how we define beauty, it has almost everything to do with looking good, right? With looking attractive. And I feel this, unfortunately, has served us not so well. And the reason why I say it's not served us well is because this warped idea of beauty has also made so many of us, right, feel like we are not beautiful, right? We are not beautiful because the standards that we see online, the standards that we see in the media, the standards that we see portrayed in uh, the television or the magazines that we read and the social media that we go through is all about looking good and looking stunning and fabulous, right? Unfortunately, this has also caused on the more extreme uh, side of things, right? This sense of, I guess, self-consciousness. And in the most uh, extreme form of self-consciousness, you have something called body dysphoria disorder, right? And um, this whole BDD, or body dysmorphic disorder, is whole, this whole sense of feeling like even one small perceived flaw in a person is magnified and you feel extra super conscious. Some might feel, oh no, my nose, right? I have a flat nose. Or some might feel like, you know, I have a big forehead, right? Um, unfortunately, BDD is very common. Coincidentally, it's also, I had the opportunity of learning about BDD in university. Um, I studied psychology in Griffith University and coincidentally, it was the final paper that I did was about body image. And um, I think then that was about 10 years ago, and I think that has been perpetuated even till today. And the most disturbing thing about BDD, or body dysmorphia, dysmorphia disorder, is the fact that it onsets most prevalently during childhood all the way to adolescence and all the way to the youths. And as we know, of course, we live in a digital era whereby most of our kids, most of our children, most of our Adi Adi, right? Most of our youngsters are online almost 24 7, right? I think the moment you take a cell phone from a youngster these days, it looks like you're taking crack off them. And it is also how most young people create perceptions and create their minds, right? Create their thought processes, create their standards, create their uh, perceptions of what is good and what is not. And the thing is about BDD or body dysmorphia disorder is that, I mean, it's not just about feeling conscious or self-conscious about yourself because you're not beautiful or because you th don't think that you're up to the standard, but it also comorbidates, it, the comorbidity of it is that it comes up together with a whole layer or spectrum of other uh, disorders, whether it's anxiety, whether or not it's uh, depression, or more worryingly, of course, it also creates um, suicidal tendencies for people. And so this is something I feel very disturbed about. And uh, I think we really do need to start re-evaluating what we see as beauty, right? And instead of seeing beauty as something that makes us feel good or something that we think uh, looks pleasant, right? Or this feeling, I believe beauty is, some, is really a lot more than that. I believe beauty is really a source of inspiration and growth. 
But the true thing about beauty, or the true important thing, is finding true beauty, or real beauty. And how do we find things? I usually find things by looking behind me, or looking at the knowledge and the wisdom that we've had all these years. Uh, Maya Angelou, of course, she's a, she's a, a civil rights activist, a poet. Uh, she also writes biographies. She mentions how you can't really know where you are going until you know where you've been. And so I don't believe that we need to start redefining beauty and finding a whole new definition of beauty. All we have to do is look back and see what the wisdom has been talking about beauty. And I believe there is a lot of merit in being able to look at the past wisdoms that many great thinkers have come about. So one of my favorite definitions of beauty comes from Rumi, the great uh, Islamic mystic Sufi, where true beauty is a ray that springs from the sacred depths of the soul and eliminates the body, just as life springs from the carnel of stone and gives color and scent to a flower. So beauty essentially is something that nourishes us. Beauty is something essentially that feeds the soul. It's not just about, ah, oh, something looks pretty, right? And so I think it's important for us to understand that, and as I said, one of the profound things is beauty can only be found in something that is good and something that is true. But what is good? So I've traveled around the world to find what is good, and I realize there's a lot of things that are good, but if they're not true, then you don't really see the true beauty of things. What I mean by this is food. Food's good, right? Delicious food, right? Really good, good food, fresh food. But if you don't eat it in a true manner, in a way that you're supposed to, it becomes bad, right? Same thing with sex. Sex is great, right? But if you don't do it correctly, you don't see it in a, in, in, in a respectful manner, then it's going to be bad as well. Exercise is good for you, right? Nutrition, supplements are good for you. But if you don't eat the true way that you're supposed to eat, then you're going to not really see the beauty of the food that you're eating. And so, of course, I've seen a lot of amazing things. I traveled across. Um, recently, I spent a few months in Indonesia. As I said, I slept in a mosque there. I, uh, I went and talked to different wise people there. And I really felt like, actually, there was a lot of things that I did was good. I learned yoga for many years. I thought I ate well and things like that. But I realized that it has to be more than good. Whatever it is that you're seeking, whether it's knowledge, whether it's understanding, something has to be beyond good. And that beyond good is truth. Because really, is goodness enough? As I said, what is goodness essentially? Confucius emphasizes the cultivation of moral virtues such as benevolence and righteousness and the fundamental aspects of personal growth and ethical li living. And likewise, Imam al-Ghazali, another Islamic Sufi mystic, also focused on the purification of the heart. And so goodness isn't just about a feeling, isn't just about how it makes you feel good, or isn't just about a nutrition that makes you feel good, but it has to purify the heart and purifying the heart comes with truth. Because the pursuit of truth in personal transformation is a necessary pre presence in unlocking beauty and goodness. Because without truth, goodness is good, of course, but goodness can be bad as well, as I said. So Gautama Buddha emph emphasized the significance of seeking truth through mindfulness, meditation and enlightenment and freedom from suffering. Essentially, I realized that truth is really important to uncover and unlock. And truth is not just something that we intellectualize as well. Truth can be felt in your bones. Truth can be felt in your soul. And you can feel it. Sometimes when you're doing something, you think it's good for you. But deep down inside, if you feel that this is not the right path and this is not something that is true, internally you will know. Because there's a necessity for a synergy between goodness, truth, and beauty. When I was traveling, I traveled to a lot of nice places, of course, and also a lot of dingy places. But you'd 
kind of not, not really expect what I mean by dingy places. I've been to some places where it's immaculately um, uh, landscaped. I've been to places like Sentosa Island, for instance. Beautiful island, amazingly landscaped, but I don't really see the true beauty in it, of it. But I've been to places whereby you don't really see any development happening at all, and you see true beauty happening. So true beauty happens with this whole interplay between goodness, truth, and beauty. Plato discussed the concept of a tripartite soul, which involves an interplay of reason, of truth, spirit, goodness, and appetite, or beauty, in achieving harmony and balance in oneself. So as we go out there and seek things, don't just seek things that are good for us, right? Because as we want to find beauty in life, it's not just about something that makes us feel good. It's not just something that we think feels pleasant, but it needs to be anchored in truth. It needs to be anchored in real reality. So great wisdoms of the past show great emphasis on the interconnectedness of goodness, truth, and beauty in personal development. By embodying goodness, by embodying seeking truth and appreciating beauty, we may strive to attain a higher level of consciousness and closeness to the divine reality leading to personal growth and a sense of in inner harmony, harmony and fulfillment. And this is where I would like to end by saying that at the end of the day, as we seek things, there's a lot of things that we're going to find that we think is going to make us feel good at the time, right? So we might be able to be popular or be an influencer, and I think that's great. And then we, we feel the popularity of that. But what, what does popularity bring without truth? death essentially right what does exercise br bring if you go if you're extreme in exercise instead of being healthy you're not healthy and so it's important for us to uncover beauty in more than it is uncover beauty th with the truth that we see because without truth it is just a thing and we're not just things we're d a divine creature that we can find true beauty and so with this i say trimakase Thank you, and peace be upon all of us. Cheers.